worship this morning on the first Sunday in Advent. My name is Pastor Seth Novak, and I'm the pastor of Anya Stay Lutheran Church. On behalf of the entire congregation, I'd like to thank you for being a part of this worship service this morning. Our building may be closed, but the church is still open. If you'd like to follow along with our service, you can find a bulletin with an order of service and a link in the video description below. Now, if you've worshipped with us before, you know that things maybe look a little bit different today. We're trying something a little bit new for Advent. It's kind of an experiment. You see, back in the early days of the pandemic, we really thought it was important to be filming worship in our sanctuary. That was the place where we all came together. And I want, we wanted to use that building as a symbol of our unity, even though we're scattered across a lot of different places right now. And I think that's worked really well for a lot of us. But as this quarantine begins to stretch on, I begin to wonder if filming in the sanctuary is like trying to live where we were rather than embracing where we are now. The reality is that the building on Peacock Hill Avenue is where we used to gather. It's where we hope to gather again, but right now we're gathering in our homes. Right now, God's house is your house. It's my house. We felt it was important to honor that, to remember that this building doesn't make us a church, but rather the people who worship in it, or these days who worship outside of it. We also wanted to try to make worship feel a little bit more personal. Most of us right now are watching worship on a computer screen or a phone or on a TV. You're not in a large room filled, surrounded by other people. It felt more authentic to try to fit this new reality rather than uh, crumble and stretch what we used to do to make it fit this. We're also attempting to be a little more collaborative with our worship. In addition to having volunteer readers and musicians and assisting ministers like we've been doing, we'd also like to share photos and videos of you lighting your Advent wreaths at home. That can be another reflection that your house is a church right now. And during the prayers of intercession, instead of writing out all of our prayers and reading them, We'd like to instead leave space for you to lift up your own prayers. We've got different petitions for the different things that we pray for, and we'd like to invite you, when those petitions come, to drop your own prayer concerns in the comments or the chat uh, so that we can pray together using one another's words. We're going to try this out for the next few weeks and see how it goes. We might go back to the other way, but only if it makes sense. This is new ground for all of us. And I really believe and I really hope that the entire church everywhere is thinking really intentionally right now about who we're going to be in this time and how we will continue to worship and serve God and our neighbors rather than just keeping on repeating the same old things we know because it's what we've always done. Another thing that's different today is that we have a guest preacher sharing the gospel and the sermon with us. I'd like to thank Pastor Rebecca Shervin, who is our Bishop's Associate in our Southwest Washington Synod, for proclaiming the good news today. I invite you to turn to your bulletin, uh, and, you, and we can uh, begin our worship together with using the words for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves we place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins have been forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness 
to do God's work in the world. Amen. look around, I see shadows of hunger. So many people in this city and around the world will go to bed hungry tonight. When I look around, I see shadows of injustice, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Everyone saying, buy, buy, buy. And someone, somewhere, will fall asleep under a bridge tonight. In the face of hunger, we light a candle of hope. In the face of injustice, in the face of despair, we light a candle of hope. Let the light from this candle say to all that God's hope is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God's hope is at hand. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson comes from the 64th chapter of Isaiah. Oh, that you would open up the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake in your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains quake at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait. You met those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, 
or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are clay and you are our potter. We are all the works of your hands. Don't be ex ex extremely angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquities forever. Now consider we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Beloved of God, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, with Christians around the world, we step into the season of Advent. In the Northern Hemisphere where we live, Advent and the whole church year begins in the shortest, darkest days of the year. It's actually one of the things I appreciate about Advent. The growing darkness lends itself to the contemplative practices that I associate with this season, like candle lighting, daily devotions, the conscious marking of time. These quiet practices invite me deep into the story of Christ's coming. Which is why the gospel text on this first Sunday of Advent always catches me a little off guard. The church year doesn't begin quietly, but with a grand, dramatic vision. The 13th chapter of Mark's gospel, the coming of Christ is depicted as a cosmic event with repercussions for all creation. Sun, moon, stars, four winds, angels, they all get in on the action in today's text. When Christ comes to bring God's redemption finally and fully, everything in heaven and earth will be involved. I would expect this bold proclamation to be accompanied by trumpets and fireworks. And yet here we are, lighting our one little candle. The flame flickers among the shadows of uncertainty and vulnerability and the fear that so many feel right now at this particular moment in history. This gospel text was written for people in the grip of fear and uncertainty, people who were mourning their losses. You may be aware that Mark's gospel was written shortly after the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Roman army. That bright, sparkling complex of buildings on the hill had been the center of Jewish life and community, a place where people gathered to live the rhythm and rituals of their faith together. It was a symbol of hope and of God's presence with the people. And it was gone, just like that. The community scattered, hither and yon. Jews and even some Gentiles in Jerusalem, for them, life as they knew it was forever altered 
by a random, cruel act of history. This event sent shockwaves through the community of Jesus' followers. They were expecting his triumphant return and got the Roman army instead. The Gospels were written for people who needed to hear the promises of God once again. The promise that the future does not belong to the Roman Empire. It doesn't belong to any empire that is built on the backs of many for the benefit of few. The future belongs to God, the God of love and justice, the God of liberation and salvation, the God who humbles the mighty and exalts the lowly. The Gospels were written by people who had experienced this God, who had seen this promised future breaking into the world in the person and ministry of Jesus. In the face of great upset and turmoil, they had good news to share. God is faithful, and God is doing a new thing. Hold fast to Christ. Keep awake to his promises. Do not lose heart. This good news sustained the early Christian community. Like the flame of a candle, these promises were passed from one generation to the next. They were a source of courage and hope for people of faith, as they are for us today. The experience of our ancestors may seem particularly poignant to us this year, as many of the structures and rhythms of our life together have been shaken and altered by a historic event. I know there are many of you who feel scattered this season, cut off from each other, unable to gather in the familiar ways that Christian communities gather during Advent and Christmas. I've heard the word apocalyptic tossed around quite a bit describing 2020, and it may be a fitting word. Apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. This year of pandemic has revealed many difficult truths. We have seen how vulnerable we are in the face of a microscopic invader. I can't believe something so tiny can wreak such havoc. We've seen how stubborn injustices result in unequal care and protection. We've seen with new eyes the broken places in our economic system and our government. As people who follow Jesus' example of justice and love, we have our work cut out for us, for sure. The Christian faith does not deny this reality. We don't dress it up in tinsel and bows and pretend that things are easy and beautiful and happy all the time. We tell the truth about suffering and injustice. But like our ancestors, we lean into the promise that suffering takes place within a larger reality. The Christian story is a story of a love so resilient and strong, so tender and true, that it holds us through all of the storms of life. In Advent, we tell the story of a God who reaches through time and space to enter our messy, unpredictable lives to bring us the gift of redemption. Redemption is not necessarily a comfortable thing. According to John the Baptist, that Advent herald who will show up in the Sundays to come, it involves repentance, which is a type of apocalyptic experience. It involves seeing things that we might not want to see about ourselves, telling truths that are hard to admit. In Advent, we hear the call to wake up, to open our eyes, to be alert to God's presence and power in our lives and to keep awake to God's promises. You see, our faith is rooted in an audacious promise that God is alive and active, and that as God created this world in love, God continues to redeem and sustain this world in love. As Christians, we trust the promise that joined to Christ Jesus in baptism, we are joined to him in all circumstances of life welcome and unwelcome, whatever lies ahead for us, for history, for creation itself, he will be present to gather us into God's love and into God's eternal life. Whatever the future brings, 
It is held by God in Christ. This is the big, bold promise of our faith. And it is the foundation of our hope. Christian hope is not a mood or an attitude. It is not the result of a well-ordered life or a perpetually cheerful temperament. Hope, as Anne Lamott, the author, writes, hope begins in darkness. Christian hope was born in an empty tomb among disappointed, heartbroken people shaken to their core. And yet they learned that where everything seems like death, God is working life. They learned that with God, nothing is impossible. It is this same hope that is reborn in us this season. It arrives with other gifts like peace and joy and love. These gifts flow straight from the heart of God to us. We do nothing to earn them. They are gifts of divine grace. We receive these gifts with open hands and strive to share them with a world in need. And together, we wait on the promise that one day, in the fullness of time, redemption will not only dawn, but will rise like the sun, and the whole creation will be gathered into God, healed and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the whole church, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. for the well-being of creation.
for peace and justice in the world, the nations, and those in authority, and our local community. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, lonely, for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For on your stay and for the people closest to us, For the faithful departed, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. this week to be reminded just how incredibly generous the people of Agnus Day are. I know that we've already had over $50,000 promised to the budget for next year, and I'm grateful for all the people who are willing to share those gifts to ensure that this congregation continues to love and serve the neighbors that God has given us. If you'd like to join me in making sure this work continues, the link in the video description will take you to a page where you can donate to the ministry of Agnus Day. Together, we will continue to share the good news as we wait for the one who comes in the name of the Lord. A word about our gather study at Agnes Day Lutheran Church. The time that we use for gather for me is a way to look at scripture and how it teaches us lessons about life and how we can recognize and respond to God's grace. How to cope and respond 
to life now and in the future. We are a loving group, caring and trusting. Our gather group has made a difference in my life for which I will be forever grateful. Thank you. At our gather meetings, we dig into the Bible study and the scripture associated with it that's provided by the women of the ELCA. For me, it's a time of spiritual renewal and renewal of the friendships. We share our pain, we share our joy. Yes, it's a Zoom meeting right now, but just seeing the faces and hearing the voices of Sisters in Christ, it warms my heart. Today, when we met as a Bible study group in Gather, we were talking about time, chronological time and God's time, and the rhythms of life, and we were reading the Bible through the lens of being modern women together, and it was such a meaningful two hours. You know, you can find a church that you feel comfortable in, but then you still have to find your niche within that church. And the monthly women's Bible study gather is so meaningful to me. I'm so grateful for it. Mysterious God, in the beginning the darkness waited and you created light. Sarah and Abraham waited for a future and you sent descendants greater than the stars. The Hebrew slaves waited for rescue and you sent Miriam and Moses to enact your liberation. Israel waited in exile for renewal and you empowered prophets and poets with your life giving speech. As the whole world groaned in waiting for release and rebirth, you sent Jesus, born of strong Mary, fathered by humble Joseph, incarnate in our humility, in solidarity with the suffering and the poor, full of wisdom and grace for all. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Hoping beyond hope, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering all your promises fulfilled in Jesus' body given for the beloved universe, in the great hope of the resurrection, and in all that is to come by your mercy, with eager expectation we cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. Send your spirit into this broken world, into our hopeful, imperfect gathering, and on this sacred bread and wine, so we may be healed and whole again and filled with the courage to love. Come, Holy Spirit. All thanks and all praise and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, here and now, and into the great beyond. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. If you are not receiving the meal this morning, receive this blessing. May the God of all hope fill you with hope as you await the coming of Christ. Amen. If you are receiving the meal this morning, I invite you to hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in life that is eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before we conclude, I'd like to share just a few announcements. Once again, I'd like to uh, invite you to share a photo or a short video of yourself or your family lighting your Advent wreath so that you can, uh, we can share those in worship. It's a fun way that we can see one another's faces and share our worship spaces with one another, but it's also a good way to share the good news with one another that God has not left us alone in these lonely times. You can participate in this project by sharing your pictures on our Facebook page or by emailing them to the church office at office at onustaylutheran.org. Also, just a reminder that um, if you don't have an Advent wreath, or if you do and you uh, would like something to do during this Advent season, uh, we do have packets available with materials and instructions for making your own Advent wreath, as well as uh, Jesse trees. Those packets are available at the front porch of the church building. You can pick those up at your convenience or uh, let the church office know if you are not able or not comfortable going out and we would be more than happy to arrange to have somebody drop one off at your house. Once again, thank you for being a part of our worship service today. If you found today's service meaningful, I'd invite you to like and like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can share this on your Facebook page uh, as a way to show other people uh, what you're up to these days. You can also uh, gather with On You Stay right here on this channel for worship every Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. And at 7 p.m. every weekday evening, we will gather on Zoom for a short Advent devotional using Father Richard Rohr's book, Preparing for Christmas. The link to the Zoom meeting, as well as links to the other meetings and activities happening in our congregation, like the Wednesday text study and the knitters uh, group, can all be found under the events tab on our website, onustaylutheran.org. Go in peace.
Christ is with you. Amen. I'd like to invite you to share that peace with someone you know using a phone call or a text or an email or by sending them the link to this video so they can worship with you. God bless you in your week.